Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 3. Welcome to Nanalyze of Dawn and a pre tournament 2v2 stream because there is a tournament on the 31st of October at 10 a.m. UTC. So sign up. There's a thread in the forums. You can sign up in there and it'll be fun. So even if you don't know if you're going to win, you should at least sign up just to give it a shot. 2v2 also compared to 1v1 tends to be a bit more volatile. So who knows? You may win. Although I make it sound like a lottery. It's a bit. Obviously, it's skill based, but yeah, it's. There is a bit more variation. 2v2 is not as well explored as 1v1, and it's also a matter of teamwork as much as it is a matter of skill. A personal skill, that is. So, moving on, we're going to start out with the game between Sabbath Care and Marquis and Rar. So, Sabbath and Care going for heavy tanks and spiders. Marquis and Rar going for hover tanks and shield bots. No cloakies, which is kind of interesting. Cloakies are a popular choice in this map, but apparently not for these players, not what they want to go for. Shields are also perfectly valid. I mean, they have the same properties of being able to go across the hills pretty easily. And with vehicle support as well at the further start location, so the center start location is the shorter rush distance, and in both cases going for the spider bots, which makes perfect sense. And similarly, the vehicle starting out at the northwest position and southeast. No one starting in the southwest or northeast. Those positions are not usually started out at in 2v2. Usually it is basically northwest versus southeast, which is exactly what we see. The players clearly know this map. They know what to expect on this map, how to play it out. And this is going pretty well as expected. Dirtbag coming in, so blue team knows where Sabbath and Care are. Sabbath and Care, I don't think they have any real knowledge of the... Nope. Sorry, a bit of knowledge. There is some knowledge of Markeeves. Sorry, of RAR. RAR and their shield butt factory. There otherwise isn't much knowledge of Marquis. Although that's been somewhat exposed now. So both players, sorry, both teams are now fully aware of the other team's composition and will now be seeking to counter it. Although this setup, Spiders is just an odd choice. I'm thinking Spider versus Hovercraft. This is not a match that we see very often. So what would you do against this? Well, Hovercraft has a lot of high alpha units. Spiders don't have a whole lot of defensive units. Except the Hermit. So I imagine we'll see quite a bit of Hermit going on. As for the shields though, that's where Venom's coming really handy and also Recluses. So Hermit Recluse could happen or we might see the heavy tanks being used with Panthers and such to deal with the shield bots. And then the spiders being used to deal with the Hovercraft. Although I don't know. I think that we'll probably just see spider. Like I don't know if we're going to see a one-on-one -on -one, because at this point, the shortest distance between the two, Marquis is going to be hitting Sabbath and Kara is going to be hitting Rar. It's like there's sort of this this diagonal split potentially. Like there's going to be a one on one. It'll be split this way. So Marquis and and Sabbath on one side and Rar and Kara on the other. In which case the next question is Shieldbot versus Heavy Tank. But as you can see, Banisher coming up for Kara, which basically gets rid of the bots. And a bit of Venom support. The Venoms will do fine against the Shieldbots at first. It's just the hovercraft is going to be weird. Like I said, this is not a matchup I've seen, I think, ever. Anytime you play shield hovercraft, you wouldn't play spiders and vice versa. I don't really know what to expect. But we'll see. Anyway, so that is an interesting opening. I just, this is strange to me. Like I said, hovercraft on this map, not super typical, though hovercraft has been popular recently. And... Mark Hughes has taken a lot of territory, so they're doing fairly well with this. While, on the other hand, RAR is, well, dealing some damage. Making it difficult for Red Team to really do much. And there goes Kara's one banisher, so at this point, Blue Team is just pulling ahead very rapidly. Already twice the economy. Hey, they're just expanding like that. Mark Hughes is extremely aggressive. And Sabbath, I think, is kind of limited by the fact that they started spiders. Like I said, I can kind of see why you'd start spiders on this map. Kind of. Though, given their speed and the fact that there aren't that many hills, and the hills are mostly bot-pathable, I would have just gone Cloaky. And I like spiders. But this map really supports Cloaky, I think, better than it does spiders. Once... If and when Red Team gets to the center, though, then Spiders will have a much easier time. They'll have hills they can actually get to and ambush from. Which is exactly what Spiders need. But at this point, it's getting to that position. Getting to the position where they can actually do that somewhat aggressive defensive play that Spiders do. That ambush-oriented play. And the Hermits are up. 
which is pretty much the only choice to go for until crabs get up because those scalpels, those scalpels are a pain in the butt. Having to deal with those is not easy. And Thuglaw already for RAR, which is no surprise, this is a 2v2. Those tend to accelerate a little bit faster than, or rather, to... That's not the word I'm looking for. It's just, well, whatever. They tend to grow... A bit faster than 1v1. I can't remember, why can't I remember the word? This is bad of me. There's a word, it starts with an E, that means to grow and develop, but I can't remember what it is. Offhand, it'll come to me. Anyway, Marquis, like I said, already got most of this side of the map. Most of the west side of the map has been taken. Rars, not taken as much as the eastern side of the map, and Care is getting in on that. Looks like Care is still not that far ahead, though. They don't have the center, whereas Marquis does, and Rar is going to be benefiting from Marquis' economy, so really, it's blue team that's very ahead. Marquis with that scalpel ball, just waiting. Just waiting for opportunity, I guess. Not really sure what they're waiting for. That scalpel ball could probably rip apart the west side, no problem. These hermits would be a problem. That actually... Oh, never mind, they're out of position, and it looks like... Looks like Marquis is moving to meet up with them? No, nope, still just keeping those scalpels in a ball. Not doing much with them yet. And red team should be well... Yeah, red team is well aware of something over here. Actually, not that aware of what's going on. Okay, so red team is not actually that aware of the scalpel ball. They know there are units there. I'm not sure if they realize how big the threat is. Escalate! That's the word I'm looking for. Things escalate more quickly in 2v2 than in 1v1. Because you start out with plus 10, well, plus 8 metal from both commanders, rather than plus 4. Although, metal income and spending is shared, so it's a little bit wonky, but yeah, ultimately... And the fact that you have multiple commanders and multiple builders does mean that you end up expanding a lot faster, because you can just... Well, you have more resources to start with, so that's the main reason. Having multiple players to do it, though, does make it a bit easier. And, RAR with this first attack, which won't... Looks like it doesn't want to stay in, though. Those Panthers doing a good job with the EMP. EMP does a really good job against shields. Hermits, on the other hand, this is what I was talking about. Forcing those scalpels to move back a bit. I mean, it's not perfect. Those hermits still die, but... Those scalpels could not just operate for free. Of course, the problem is those were the only hermits at, the po at that point. There are more coming up. No, this is it. This is the replacement force of four hermits. Although Sabin and Kara are actually pretty much on par economically. They just need to be producing more. Don't have quite the energy, and certainly don't have the build power moving into the factory. Why is this weaver just sitting around here? It, it's not even repairing. It's, okay, there we go, finally. It was not on guard orders for some odd reason. I do not know, and that's probably, if anything's going to lose the red team in this game, it is going to be the fact that they were not building. And a harassment coming in from Kara over to the northeast side of the map. Rar is still in the center. Marquis moving... Are they moving to the center? No, they're, they're still split around this particular ridge. But they have nothing to worry about. Like, a dozen scalpels over to the north and half a dozen over to the south of that ridge. That southwest ridge is not going to be a problem. Care looks to be doing a number. Got rid of a metal extractor. They can go around with those panthers no another pass. They should be okay. Should deal some meaningful damage. But at the same time, Rar moving straight into Sabbath's main base, and Sabbath doesn't have very much to deal with this. And Rar already gone for level 3 commander with a bunch of drones. And this is probably going to do the base in. I think Sabbath's probably lost their main base. Care making a valiant effort with these Panthers, but unfortunately did not quite work out as well as they would have hoped. Another Lotus having been built up, which helps stop those Panthers, and down goes the Spider Factory. The Crab also going down, so there goes that potential answer. I mean, that's the thing. With the scalpels, that crab was necessary, and this is basically game. Destroying that factory, especially since they have had no economy production, or no production really. Same with Care. Okay, Sabbath had thrown some build power into their construction, but Care hasn't, and Care doesn't have a secondary factory or anything. Marquis and Rar, they aren't pushing the most effectively and most efficiently, but they still have been pushing. They haven't been accessing. They have metal in stores, though, that could go to units, but honestly, it in this case doesn't matter. It didn't happen to matter, but yeah, in general it would. And yeah, they're probably going, what the heck? Why are you not pushing build power? What is wrong with you? What is Care building anyway? Okay, Care is building defenses. That's about it. 
that's really about it. So yeah, unfortunately for the red team, poor economic management. That is always unfortunate. And that happens, that slows things down. The Hermes did do a decent job, but there just weren't enough of them. For all the scalpels that had come in, like, there needed to be... Because each Hermit... Can I get... Yes, I can. Okay. Each Hermit has 1,400 health. Each scalpel, I believe, deals 400 dam... 400 or 600 damage a shot. Let's see. Double check this before we get to the end game. Yeah, 622 damage a shot. So they can survive three scalpel hits, but you still need a lot of them to get into the counterattack and do the damage back. So, I'd say probably two or three Hermits per Scalpel, which you consider the cost. I mean, Scalpels are 220, Hermits like 140 or something. 160. So you still need... To, actually, is that really... The amount of damage they deal. 54 damage per second on 680 health. Well, that's 10 seconds to kill them. Yeah, actually, I'd say it's like one, one to one if you have a few more... If you have cost of Hermits compared to cost of Scalpels, the Hermits probably win. I'm not entirely sure because you will lose a few Hermits to begin with. But cost of Hermits versus cost of Scalpels is like 4 to 3 ratio, so that's pretty good. If you consider that a bunch of them would die and damage per second from one Hermit will kill one Scalpel, yeah, that should that should be a win for the Hermits. But there weren't enough of them. Production. Production. Big, big deal. Anyway, moving on to the next game, which will be between two players. Actually, four players, because it is also 2v2. There's a lobby 2v2. It'll be on Zed. Mackie and Stumi versus Selenostomus and Failer. Or Selenostomus. And Failer. That'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 